I think what's really important for healthcare professionals is to know about this endocannabinoid system, the newly discovered endogenous cannabinoid system. Endogenous meaning it's made within the body. Scientists have discovered that it's an ongoing um, process here. More and more is being discovered and learned about, learned about our human body uh, you know, on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, but it's, what we've discovered is it's not just in humans. It's in all animals, mammals, birds, et cetera, except insects, um, which might explain why they've just kind of been basic as life, you know, from ancient times to now. I don't think the ants change that much, or the cockroach, we'll put it that way, hasn't changed much over time. But if we look at this system, I think what we're seeing is on the molecular level, its main purpose is to help us maintain homeostasis or balance. Not to stay here, but to stay within this balance level, not to be extremes, but to keep us on an even keel, to keep our systems working well. And it affects almost all of our physiological processes. It's, it's involved with the immune system. It's involved with our pulmonary system. We've got receptors in our bronchioles that help open the airways when needed. It's involved with our heart, our, you know, our blood, our circulatory system, almost any system. Um, and, and that does a lot, I mean, one, we need it to help keep us in balance, to keep us healthy. Uh, and if you look at it that way, you can say that it, it fights stressors. Daily life, we're taking in stressors. Um, we survive by nourishment, the food we eat. Well, in today's world, we're not eating real food a lot of the time. We're eating chemicals or processed food. The liver has to work hard to get rid of those chemicals. Um, and here's the endocannabinoid system helping process that, helping making sure those foods are used right. Um, we've got stressors coming from whether it be physical injuries to deal with uh, and the body needing to heal us after those injuries from being attacked by bacteria, by fung fungus, by viruses. Um, you know, any kind of system that could go wrong in our body, the endocannabinoid system is in there on this molecular level making things happen, and it's taught us a lot. We always used to think, um, like nerves, we have our afferent and efferent nerves. I mean, nerves that travel this way down from the brain down here to feel stuff and then to signal back to the brain to tell us something. And with the endocannabinoid system, we're learning about this, as we say, modulating effects it has. It actually, it can go back and forth on, in, in between nerves. It can travel back up if it needs to. It, it can like shut something down or turn something on as needed by the body. And that, just even that little example might help explain like phantom pain. You know, um, uh, phantom pain being something when someone loses a, a limb or something, you lose your leg or you lose an arm, and yet patients will say they're still, they're feeling pain in their fingers. They don't have any fingers left. But the, the nerves are, they're kind of caught up in this, in this thing. Enough. And, and the, yeah, the endocannabinoid system needs to help turn that off. No, there's nothing going on there, turn it off. Uh, so it's a really, really important overall system for our functioning. Um, you know, it should be, it's one thing that for me, I keep going, why, why isn't this worldwide? Why, I, I shouldn't say worldwide, why in the United States isn't this headline news? Why, is it, why doesn't 60 Minutes have something on 2020? Every news show, uh, you know, why aren't all the, uh, Dr. Oz, you know, you name the, 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 the medical shows. Why aren't they talking about this? This is amazing science. We don't know enough about it, but in the future, I'm sure we're gonna learn how to, in going to your physician's office and have your endocannabinoid system somehow measured to see if it's functioning optimally or not. Uh, we're learning things like it's helping explain why um, we can help, how we can help keep it healthy. One, obviously, by eating good food, because we are what we eat. If we eat good food, all of our, um, you know, everything in our body will be healthier, being nourished. I, in terms of, you know, the fact that it's not just humans that this endocannabinoid system is so important to, it's, it's with animals. Historically, we've also found that not only there were a lot of cannabis medicines, tincture of cannabis, um, we had canadana cigarettes for asthma, but back then they knew that it was good, it opened up the airways, and we've now found those receptors in our bronchioles to help explain, oh, okay, that's what happens, it helps the, the airway relax and open up so the asthmatic who's getting tightening and can't get air helps them relax and breathe. But, so we've got these old bottles, but we've also found old medicines for animals, you know, to help with colic in, in the horse. Um, 
you know, so, you know, how many of us have cats, dogs, etc.? We happen to be uh, golden retriever lovers. But whatever it may be, that this could be a very important for animals to fight cancer, to help, I mean, it, the system, same thing, it's gonna help them stay in balance. And is, you know, how many of, of our animals are suffering from certain things, same as humans, that cannabis could be very important for them. There's, there's a future out there, not only for humans, but our animals need this, this medicine too.